Okay, question. Do you struggle with self-esteem? So many of you have reached out to me in different platforms in different ways and told me that self-esteem is like your number one thing that you wish you had more of or that you would change. So if self-esteem is something that you struggle with, by the end of this video today, you are going to have five easy tips and tricks that you can apply to your life today that can help start improving your self-esteem. They're things I use, they're things I teach my girls, they're things that I think are going to make a huge difference for you because if you don't have good sense of self or self-esteem, really everything else around you kind of doesn't matter. If you want more videos like this, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell. I don't know where it's going to end up so that you get notified every Wednesday when I post new videos. Okay, if you ever watched me on Dance Moms, or if you follow me on any of my social media, you know that one of the things I pride myself most on is raising my girls to be like strong, independent, like they don't care what other people do or say because they have such a good sense of self. I also love a pep talk, not gonna lie. I hear so often from you, oh, I wish that you were my mom, or what would you tell me if you were my mom? Or when I'm older and I have kids, I wanna be a mom like you. Or I have kids and I'm going through the same thing that you are. So, it is official, it is now your turn. I'm going to adopt you. I don't know if I can afford you, I'm gonna try. However, welcome to the Lucasiac family because I am going to be giving you all the same advice that I give to my girls. Let's start from the top. So I think people often confuse the term self-esteem and self-confidence. So let me kind of tell you the difference between the two and today we're gonna to be talking about self-esteem. So self-esteem is really how you feel about yourself. Do you like yourself? Do you feel good about yourself? And self-esteem shouldn't be based on any qualifying outside circumstances. Now, self-confidence, on the other hand, is a little different. Self-confidence isn't about how you feel about yourself. Self-confidence is how you feel about yourself in a situation. Like, are you confident in the way that you can present in front of a class? Or are you confident in the way you handle yourself in an argument? That's self-confidence. Self-esteem are the feelings that you have at night when you're falling asleep and it's just you and your own brain. We are gonna talk about self-esteem and the little things that you can do to help increase that because once you have good self-esteem, self-confidence is easier to come by. So we need to start at the top. Number one, practice positive self-talk. What does that mean? That means that I want you to talk to yourself like you would talk to anyone else in this world because I guarantee you the things that you're telling yourself in your own brain, you would never say out loud to another person. I can think of so many examples where people are like, oh God, he didn't text me back because I'm ugly. My nose is so big, I don't deserve to have this. I'm stupid, my friends don't like me because I'm a loser. Somebody very wise once told me to think and talk to yourself like you would when you were six. Think of yourself as a six-year-old child, like if you were babysitting yourself, how you were when you were six. You were probably so excited, you were friendly, you know, you thought anything was possible in the world. So when you're talking to yourself in your own mind and you're saying all those hateful things, start to be kind to yourself. Would you ever say to your six-year-old self, like, you're not good enough? Of course not. You'd be like, you can do anything. Oh my God, that's amazing. Just changing the way that you have a conversation in your own mind is going to start shifting things around you. And it could be tiny little things at first that maybe you don't notice, but they will start to pile up. And before you even realize it, things are going to shift in a big way and you're gonna go, well, how did that happen? You believe what you hear. So if you're always hearing that you're a loser or you're ugly or you don't deserve that, of course you're gonna believe that. You need to switch the way you talk to yourself. Seems simple, seems trite, huge differences, I promise. Number two, practice self-compassion. Now, what exactly does that mean? Practicing self-compassion can be summed up really easily, and that is you need to forgive yourself. People hold on to mistakes that they've made in the past and they never really forgive themselves for it. In order sometimes to move forward and to feel better about yourself, you need to forgive yourself for mistakes that you've made in the past. By forgiving yourself, you kind of give yourself permission to make a new mistake and to move on. Because guess what? Your whole life is going to be decisions. And do you think that every decision that you're gonna make for the rest of your life is going to be exactly perfect and right? 
No. Could you imagine if I held on to all of the mistakes that I've made in the past? You've seen a lot of them on TV. Like if I was holding on and punishing myself for every mistake I made, oh my God. Well, first of all, I would never move on. And second of all, I could never forgive myself for just my fashion choices alone. So you need to let go of your past mistakes, move on, forgive yourself because you're gonna make mistakes for the rest of your life. And if you're always beating yourself up because of that mistake, guess what? You're gonna spend a whole lot of time self-loathing instead of building up your self-esteem. And then you're gonna miss out on so many other great things that you're supposed to be doing instead of hating yourself. Step three, give yourself something to be proud of. Let's say that you are a dancer and your goal is to do 14 turns in second or a la seconde, you know, depending on if you're a ballerina or if you're a jazz dancer, whatever. You're not going to start with, I need to do 14 turns perfectly today. Where you would want to start is I'm going to do one. And you start working towards that goal and you practice it and you figure out, you know, the way to make it just right so that you can do it, land it, feel solid. And that is your attainable goal. You're proud of that because you accomplished it. So then you do two, then you do three and you work your way up to 14. If you want to write a book, you don't start with, oh, I'm going to write a book today because chances are you're not going to sit down and write a book today but maybe you could work on the first chapter. That's a great example. And then when you do that, you can celebrate that goal. It doesn't have to be something that big either. I know that there are days that I don't think I'm gonna be able to get out of bed. Maybe your goal for the day, something that you can be proud of is just getting out of bed, putting on a pair of sweatpants and brushing your teeth. Because trust me, there are days when that is worth celebrating. Give yourself something to be proud of. And when you achieve that goal, you celebrate it. And you celebrate it, like you say it out loud, you know, turn on a song, dance around your house. I'm not kidding. These types of things make a difference. It sounds cheesy, but when you start putting these types of things into action, you're going to be like, I can't believe what a difference it makes. I do this for my girls all the time. If they do the slightest thing that is exciting that they were working towards, we celebrate it. You know, we're like, oh my God, I can't believe that you achieved that. And I think that is one of the biggest reasons why they have such a good sense of self. I want you to comment yes below if you're going to give yourself a goal and when you reach it, if you're going to celebrate it, like just a yes. Like, are you going to dance around your house? Are you going to eat a piece of cake? Are you going to call your best friend? As long as you celebrate it any way that you want to, that's the most important thing. Step four, acknowledge effort, not outcome. Now that sounds a lot like step three, but it's actually a little bit different. Let's take a math test, for example. Let's say I had a math test. I'm going to be honest sucked in math. I knew that I wasn't going to get an A in math every time I took a test. It wasn't going to happen. My brain just doesn't work like that. So if I said to myself, I have to get an A or this wasn't good enough, I was never going to be good enough. So I'm setting myself up for failure. However, I knew that the best thing I could do was to study hard, prepare as best I could for the test, go in there, do my best, take whatever the grade was. If I did my best, there was nothing else I could do. The rest was out of my hands. I needed to reward myself or acknowledge the effort that I put in, not the outcome. So when Clara comes home and she's like, I talked to a new person on the playground, but they didn't really want to talk to me. Okay, that's fine. She can't control what that person does, but she can't control the effort that she made. So I will say to her, Clara, I am so glad that you went out of your comfort zone and you talked to a new person on the playground. That's amazing. Now, if I had been focusing on the outcome, I would have been like, oh, I'm so sorry you don't have a new friend. That's not the same thing. So you want to acknowledge the effort, not the outcome. Make sense? Tip five. And I think this one is probably going to be the one that you take away that's the easiest to apply. Well, Actually, this might be the hardest to apply. And that is, I want you to try to stay off of social media an hour before you go to bed at night and an hour after you wake up in the morning. That seems really impossible. So maybe not start with an hour, maybe start with 10 minutes, 10 minutes before bed, 10 minutes when you wake up, then go to 15, 20, you know, do it in increments so that it's an easier thing to implement than just going like, okay, it's an hour. I know that's hard. What is that going to do for you? Well, I think we all know that social media is a place that we tend to compare ourselves to others easily. Like you're always like, oh God, I'm not that skinny. I'm not that pretty. I don't have that much money. Right before you go to bed, take those last few minutes before you go off to sleep. Instead of feeling badly about yourself, lay there and think of that positive self-talk that we talked about earlier in this video. 
or go through the things that you want to try to accomplish tomorrow. Don't focus on somebody else and how you don't measure up to them, but rather go inside of yourself and celebrate who you are instead of comparing yourself to somebody on social media. Same thing in the morning. When you wake up, it's so easy to jump right on social media. And if something goes down at night, because I have been guilty of this and you see it on social media, it can put you in a bad mood for the rest of the day. Okay, so now you have five easy tips and tricks that you can apply to your life today to help begin increasing that self-esteem. And if you want more ideas like this, make sure that you click the link in my description box and sign up for my newsletter because I would love to share more tips and tricks like this with you. If you like this video, make sure that you hit the like button, share it with a friend, subscribe, all the things. But most importantly, leave a comment below and let me know which tip you like the most or that you think you're gonna try because I would really like to know and I hope it was helpful. So I'll see you next week. Bye.